So I'm very happy to introduce our next speaker today. We've got Ashwath uh, Srinivasan, who's going to be talking about um, leveraging user behavior insights to enhance search relevance. And for those of you who don't know, uh, UBI is a really exciting project that uh, we've actually been working with the Open Search team on uh, at Open Source Connections. And one of those ideas that when you understand it, you think, why hasn't this been done before? Um, and it's wonderful to, to uh, to hear a bit more about it. So Ashwath is a uh, senior search engine architect at uh, AWS. He's been working in search as a search engineer for several years in use cases like e-commerce search, enterprise search, site search. Um, and yes, he's currently working on open search. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand over to Ashwath. Round of applause. Thank you, Charlie. I hope the, the folks in the Zoom are able to hear me. Uh, put in the chat if you don't. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining from. Uh, my name is Ashwat. Um, I am going to talk about uh, leveraging UBI, user beha behavior insights to enhance your search relevancy uh, today. Um, I, I mean, um, having worked with several search engines uh, uh, for several search use cases over the past several years, I am currently focusing my attention, my uh, uh, effort towards open search uh, these days. I'm quite glad about it. Um, and how is open search doing? Open search is a little over three years old right now, with over uh, 700 million downloads, ranking fourth in the DB Engine's ranking with uh, 80 different partners and growing every day and uh, with uh, uh, multiple uh, major cloud providers such as uh, AWS, which is where I'm employed, Oracle, uh, Ali Cloud, Huawei Cloud, and Azure and GCP via our uh, uh, partners uh, uh, offering managed solutions for open search. And uh, if you have not seen the announcement, um, open search is now a software foundation uh, under the Linux foundation. And with all these things, um, I'm happy to say that uh, we are doing pretty good, yeah? Um, and I'm not sure if you are able to capture the color scheme compatibility between Open Search uh, and the Linux Foundation. Uh, I think this was meant to happen, yeah? So once again, I'm pretty glad uh, that this happened. So any questions about uh, how open source is Open Search is already, I think, uh, self-answered, yeah? So uh, in this talk, I would be talking about uh, UBI, uh, User Behavior Insights, or UB, that's what we call it. Uh, the why, uh, what does UBI provide? Uh, UBI with open search, how do you use UBI with open search and beyond open search, and uh, the art of the possibilities uh, with uh, UBI. Um, oh, unfortunately, I have not stopped, uh, started my time. So give me just one second. I'm also having the same screen, so I don't have the time. Yeah, but I'm hoping someone can. <laughs> okay. Uh, why UBI? Um, uh, unlike in the database world, where a good result is well defined, uh, often in such world, it's not the case. Yeah, uh, everyone wants the best result, right? But the best is very related to best uh, according to whom? Best according to you, or your product managers, or your business or your relevancy engineers, yeah? Uh, but maybe users, uh, I think they are the end target. So uh, if we somehow capture what the users are doing, uh, we should be able to infer what is good, yeah? So that is the whole point of UBI. So that's the uh, bottom line of UBI, at least at this point. Um, and with this strong justification, or at least I hope, I will move on to the UBI goals. Um, the goals for UBI is, to collect data. So we collect data set. Okay, I, <laughs> I try not to say we, but uh, so we don't collect the data. So you collect the data, you own the data, so you control the data. So you're not giving the data to anyone. Yeah, uh, let me put that out there. So with UBI, the data that is collected um, are such as uh, what are the searches that are being done? Yeah, uh, did the user use the type ahead feature? Uh, did the user click on the facet uh, refiner to filter the search, yeah? Or did they click on a search result? Did they not click on a search result? 
or several users not clicking on the same search result. Maybe it's an anomaly listing that shouldn't even be uh, there in the search results in the first page, yeah? And also things like, um, uh, what are the sequence uh, in which the searches are executed? Uh, how are they related to each other? Um, and also maybe things like um, how long uh, it took for the search to show up, yeah? And also uh, another thing is um, search backwards in the sense uh, uh, when a purchase is made, how do we know what was the search journey? So how did someone end up making a purchase? So these are the kind of data that uh, UBI collects. Um, and, and of course, yeah, I mean, some of you or many of you have this uh, question. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are several uh, tools out there, uh, Google Analytics or Core Metrics or Snowplow, right? Um, they do capture what the users are doing, uh, how long are they in the, the dwell time, how long are they there, uh, what did they click on, did they click on the back button, and things like that. But often, I mean, in, a, in, in the context of search, uh, for a non-static page, such as a search results page, right, oftentimes the metrics that are captured by these generic tools are very noisy. Uh, you give this data to your search engineer, they probably are going to want a data engineer to clean up the data before even they can make sense out of this data, yeah? So once again, so this is the whole point of UBI. Um, UBI is the kind of data collected by the search engineers for the search engineers. So it cannot get any more tailor-made uh, than this, yeah? And if you're still not convinced, probably you are from uh, Trace Talk, uh, but if you're still not, uh, I mean, as a search engineer, you probably are using several of these tools or such uh, components, you're using QWERTY, or you're trying to integrate uh, semantic search, you are doing some kind of hybrid search, lexical and semantic canon search, or you're using neural sparse search. I mean, you can do all you want, but how would you know if you're making your search better or worse, right? I mean, um, you can do um, uh, evaluation tools, you can use evaluation tools, uh, you can do A-B testing, create judgment lists, right? But Measuring and tracking user behavior acts as a source for anything that is listed in here. So once again, that is why UBI. And once you are able to do this, you are able to tune your search based on whatever you have understood from here, and the cycle goes on, yeah? Um, what does UBI provide at its core? Uh, UBI provides the standardized schema, so that is the um, uh, fundamental uh, Thing that UBI provides a standardized uh, schema. Uh, it also provides client-side instrumentation, uh, a bunch of JavaScripts, yeah. Uh, it also provides uh, tools to collect the generated data, and it also provides the means to analyze the collected data. So this is the scope, at least for now, once again, for UBI. Uh, so these are the UBI priorities, and um, Anytime uh, anyone talking about standardizing the schema, this meme uh, shows up, yeah? Um, lucky for us, um, there is no competing schema, at least at this point, in the context of search. Um, so yeah, uh, once again, lucky for us, but I hope it remains the same for the coming days, coming several years down the line, yeah? Uh, zooming in, uh, getting into the technicals, uh, UBI, um, at least in open search right now, uh, is uh, there as two indices, uh, the query index and the events index. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, on the queries index, uh, we are going to store uh, the search queries that are uh, being done. So you're going to lock the search queries. And on the events index is where the click metrics go. What is the user doing and so on and so forth, yeah? Uh, zooming in further, I hope uh, it is legible enough. Uh, looking at this, this is the standardized schema that we have uh, for the queries index. And if you look at it, we have the client ID, which captures, I also have an uh, example document in here. So the client ID captures the user, uh, identifies the user in a combination with what um, browser or what front end or application, mobile or desktop, yeah. Such kind of information can go there. Uh, the query, which is where you log the entire query. In the context of um, uh, open search, we have the entire open search uh, DSL query being logged here. So you can simply, I mean, copy and paste uh, and rerun the query at a later point in time when you need it, right? 
Uh, query attributes, as you see, it's a flat object, which means it can take, uh, once again, in open search, it can take an entire JSON. Uh, so anything that is not captured as a part of the UBI queries can actually go there. Um, as you can see here in this example, uh, there is application name uh, within the query attributes. And then the query ID, um, important one, which is where we actually identify what is the query. So you have to reuse the query ID if you have to um, track the user journey or the search journey. Yeah. So that's why query ID is uh, super important in this uh, uh, schema. Now the response ID hits is where you lock the doc IDs that were sent as a part of the search. So a search has been made, doc IDs are written to the uh, user. So those IDs uh, go there, only those ones that are um, uh, seen on the search results page go there, yeah. Um, time, uh, yeah, timestamp, which is once again, uh, the time at which the search has happened and uh, the user query, which is basically the search term that was used, iPhone or uh, tablet or notebook or whatever that was being searched, yeah. Uh, on the events index, um, we have the action name. Action name takes in uh, what action was performed. Was it on search or was it on the click on a facet? Was it on a, uh, was it a usage of a type ahead? So those things can go there. Um, application, the same as the UBI queries application, the application name, client ID, once again, the same, identifying the user with the combination of what, how they are using your uh, uh, portal. Um, even attributes, I will come back to this. Uh, message can take, uh, in this example, um, uh, it stores the item that was clicked, the search result, uh, the title of the search result that was clicked. Um, and we have the query ID, once again, the same query ID that you used in the UBI queries index. And uh, the timestamp, once again, when the event happened. So if you look at it, right, um, both uh, the queries and the events index uh, carry timestamp uh, of the current time when the uh, action was performed, which also means you can treat both, both these indices as uh, time series data, yeah? So uh, uh, going back to the event attributes, so anything that you think is not captured, is not available as a part of the schema, anything else that you want to capture can go uh, in the events attributes, yeah? Um, so basically, this is where you can go wild, uh, but this is also where uh, mapping explosion can happen. So which means you have to find the balance between uh, these two. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, so uh, even attribute some example. Uh, what was the position of the search result that was clicked? What was the pos position on the screen that was clicked? Such information. Yeah, and there are more things like. Uh, dwell time and things that are being captured in, in this example, yeah. Uh, UBI with open search. Um, uh, I will quickly talk about the data flow in here. Um, so uh, UBI in open search is a plugin, yeah. Uh, so you have to install the plugin with open search um, um, to use UBI. Uh, in this flow diagram, we have uh, the search endpoint, which is there in uh, open search. And we have the UBI queries uh, index here, the events index in here. And uh, you have the search box over there and someone is performing a search, your user is performing a search. The search is now served. Uh, the UBI plugin identifies that a search request has been made and it is logging the search request in the UBI's query uh, index, yeah. Now the search is now executed, uh, doc IDs are sent back uh, to the user the UBI plugin not only captures the search request that was uh, made, it also locks the doc IDs that were sent as a part of the search request in the same document, yeah. Um, now, uh, uh, the user is performing some action. They are clicking on certain results. Uh, they are interacting with your uh, uh, search results. Let's say they click on one of the results. So this is where you lock this data onto the UBI uh, events index using those client-side uh, uh, instrumentation. Unlike the UBI queries, where you send the request as it is, and the plugin takes care of logging the such request into the UBI queries index, for the events, you have to use the client-side instrumentation, the JavaScript that I would show you, uh, to directly pass that uh, information to the UBI events index, yeah? Now the uh, user has gone to the details page. They click on, let's say, uh, add to cart or uh, uh, reviews or uh, whatnot. So 
those events are once again captured into the UBI events index. So this is one way of doing it. And uh, uh, you can, um, on open search, you can actually get uh, in real, real time of uh, whatever is happening, uh, however the user is interacting with your uh, search application. Uh, but you can also, in order to scale, uh, what you can do is instead of sending the uh, client side information or uh, the events information, instead of sending them directly to open search, you can use um, uh, staging data prepper. Uh, data prepper is a lightweight, if you do not know, it's a lightweight uh, data processing tool in the open search uh, ecosystem. Yeah. So you can lock those, you can go via data prepper and then batch it up and then put it to the UBI events index, yeah? Another advantage of doing this is basically if you have some uh, critical information that is not uh, exposed in the front end, let's say profit margin, product profit margin, which is basically not available in the front end unless you want someone to hack and know in your information. So these information exist uh, somewhere else, let's say DynamoDB or your file system or anywhere, yeah? So what you can actually do is when you get the events, as and when you get the events, you get the corresponding uh, sens sensitive information from, from wherever they are stored. So this is where you can use to uh, merge the data as one data and put it back to your uh, events index, yeah? So this is the data flow, and now I would show you how this happens uh, in OpenSearch. So, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with uh, open search dashboards. This is the uh, visualization or dashboarding uh, element of open search, yeah. Um, so if you go to the tab tools, which is where uh, you can um, use the APIs to interact with the uh, open search. Um, I'm once again not sure how legible it is. Let me know if it is not, uh, uh, it is not, okay, so. Uh, let's see, good enough, good enough, yeah, no, okay. So um, uh, the first thing that you, so uh, cat plugins tells me the list of uh, plugins I have. The last one, UBI, OpenSearch UBI plugins is the plugin that uh, you want. Uh, uh, um, so this needs to be installed, of course, yeah. And in order to get started, uh, so this, I have a sample uh, uh, e-commerce data set uh, indexed in this uh, open search uh, uh, cluster. And I am using the Chorus open search edition uh, uh, repo. If you are not familiar with it, uh, the QR code has the link to this. So it basically, I'm not sure, okay. Yeah, so uh, this basically is, uh, uh, let's go to the Docker Compose. It basically has uh, a data prepper that I showed you. It has uh, open search. It has uh, open search uh, dashboards. And it also has the chorus UI, uh, which is basically this. And the data that you see in here is the sample data that is indexed as a part of this index. Yeah, so a bunch of e-commerce data, sample data, um, so in order to get started with UBI, what you have to do is basically, this is a match all query, which means uh, a star query, bring everything, yeah. Um, and what you have to do is basically extension, UBI, and a dummy, not dummy, but an empty call, which basically creates uh, these two indices, uh, the query index and the events index with the set uh, schema. So the standard schema is already created for you for both the uh, queries index and the events index. Um, so this is, I mean, uh, easy way to get started, but of course, yeah, I mean, you want, if you want to have an extended schema, if you want to extend the schema, if you want to change it a little bit, you have to create it from the, by yourself. And also if you want to have a different, uh, sharding strategy, because this obviously is going to create with the default uh, sharding strategy, which is, uh, one primary, one replica. And before you know, your events index is actually going to grow. So you want to be careful uh, when you create an index, yeah. Um, and in this example, um, this is just a search call, uh, as you see here, a query string. Uh, default uh, field that I'm searching here is title. And I'm searching for something, search for iPhones from Dev tools. And I did tell you that uh, the UBI plugin is going to lock the search request just like that, but it's not entirely true. You still have to pass this information uh, to the, in the UBI clause, right? In the UBI 
syntax, um, which is basically query ID, which is something that you pass uh, from the front end. You generate a query ID and you pass it. Uh, user query, which is basically the search term that uh, the user has searched for, the search phrase. The client ID uh, to identify the user. The query attributes, for in this example, is the application uh, name. But of course, if you, okay, so if I execute the search, right, so I have the hits, so I hit one, hit two, and if you collapse, uh, I get a query ID that was passed as a part of this uh, search request, yeah. But of course, you can also um, let OpenSearch create a query ID. In this case, it is going to create a query ID. Uh, but the only thing is, if you are letting the plugin to create the query ID, uh, you have to, in order to track the search journey, uh, uh, you have to reuse the query ID as you see fit. Yeah, in, in your context, what what does a user session mean to you uh, would dictate how you want to reuse this query ID, how much uh, of a reuse that you want to uh, use for this uh, query ID, yeah? So now that I have uh, generated a query ID, right? I would, uh, so now I am searching against the UBI queries index, yeah? And if I look up for this one, I actually have the entire query that, that I used. I also have the three doc IDs that were sent, uh, sent back because uh, if you look at it, I'm only sending, uh, I'm only asking for three documents in here. So which means it has only sent back uh, three doc IDs and the rest of the things, right? The query, the user query um, and the query ID and uh, the client ID timestamp and so on and so forth. So this is how you populate the UBI queries index, yeah? And uh, for the events index, uh, like I said, it is not uh, the plugin's uh, responsibility to log it. It is your responsibility to, I mean, also for UBI queries, there is partially your responsibility in sending the information, uh, but for the events completely, um, it is independent of the plugin that we have, yeah. So if you look at this example, hopefully it is big enough. I go and I show you this. So I search for iPhone, I click on this. I did click on it um, because there is no detail space for this dummy uh, uh, demo site. And if you look at it, I actually can see this endpoint go to, uh, going to my data prepper. And uh, the request body, uh, the payload is basically uh, just as you saw in the uh, command. So the action name, the product was clicked. Uh, the client ID uh, to identify the user and the query ID, which is the same query ID that probably either generated by UBI for iPhone or the one that you created in the front end. So, I mean, if you want, like I said, in order to identify the um, uh, query, uh, okay, never mind. Let me not go there. Yeah. So now let's say um, I, uh, as a user, click on a bunch of filters. Let's say I'm using the facet filter, which is once again in this context, uh, it's a separate uh, search uh, query. Uh, so which is why you can see another M search happening. And if you scroll enough, you should be able to see the extension UBI stuff and stuff. Yeah. So. Uh, but hopefully you saw, you, oh, 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 it's too tiny. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, you can see here, um, yeah, so this is the UBI information that uh, your front end is sending. And I also, let's say, um, now I click on uh, add to card, or, or you can also, cons I mean, um, you can also, let's say, consider this, button click as a uh, adding to my favorites. So now if you look at uh, the events, you see the brand filter was clicked and uh, the product item was clicked, uh, add to cart was clicked. Uh, and uh, the, I mean positive, which is basically let's say add to cart. So this is how you send the information. So you just post the information to open search. Now going back uh, to open search, now you should be able to see uh, the different things that we just did. Uh, you can see the product click, you can see the, let's say, adding to the favorites, 
um, you can see once again a product click and so on and so forth. So everything that we did uh, is already persisted uh, in OpenSearch. Um, yes. So uh, so this is how you basically populate both the UBI query index and the events index. Um, and at this point, you are pop, uh, you you are uh, you have already collected the data, or you already have streamlined a process to collect the data. So the next thing is analyzing the collected data, right? Um, so now we, I would show you a dashboard that we have that uh, was built. Um, this is the dashboard that was built. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, one of the pie charts explaining um, uh, a pie chart based on action name. Yeah. So basically, this says uh, the different actions that were that were performed. Uh, in, the, in the span of uh, last one year. Uh, brand filter, uh, add to cart, just 1.6%. You can already know how much of an add to cart contributes to the entire actions that are performed by the users. Um, another uh, visualization for uh, the uh, click positions, another visualization for uh, uh, the profit margin, for uh, the Trending searches are the most popular searches with at least one result or overall uh, uh, popular searches. Uh, session duration, probably a, a visualization built on top of uh, the client ID or maybe even session ID because uh, you can basically extend the schema, like I said, yeah. And another chart for, let's say, um, price, uh, the amount spent by client uh, ID, so who's spending a lot, so, um, so someone is dropping serious cash in this uh, dummy e-commerce uh, website, yeah. Um, and this is already available for you uh, in the documentation. If you go uh, the dashboards, uh, the Open Search UBI documentation, you can already uh, download this ndjson file and import it as an object into your Open Search dashboards, which means you can already readily have this dashboard. Yeah. Of course, it. For some of you who are already familiar with, let's say, Kibana or Open Search dashboards, this probably is very uh, uh, easy, I would say. But let's say for someone who is getting started, yeah, uh, with UBI uh, 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 at least, yeah, you can start importing it and start uh, visualizing uh, your data just like that. Yeah. Um, another motivating factor to use the standardized schema and not going um, uh, off track is basically you can reuse that are being developed by someone else. So someone else is developing, they're putting it uh, out there uh, with the proper licensing. So you can just like that use it because the schema that you and them are probably uh, the same, the ones that are used. Yeah. So I also managed to create uh, another visualization for uh, the long tail queries. Yeah. Goes to say that it is pretty uh, straightforward to create uh, uh, visualizations to uh, get insights from your user behavior data, yeah. So another thing that I wanted to quickly show you is uh, notebooks is where uh, is, is kind of reporting in uh, OpenSearch. Uh, you can create reports. But what I want to show here is how you can use uh, the SQL uh, handler in OpenSearch to um, analyze the uh, collected data in an ad hoc manner. So let's say you have uh, product managers or executives, um, let's say non-technical users, but just enough to know SQL, but uh, you don't have time to create visualization for them, uh, but they want to quickly look at some information, right? Uh, with the user behavior data. So SQL um, is, I would say a universal language. So this is a bunch of some examples of how you can use SQL to analyze the uh, ingested data, uh, long tail uh, searches, pretty simple uh, SQL query. Uh, you also have the trending searches. Once again, you can add in the where clause uh, timestamp to see the trending searches in the last six hours or 12 hours or 24 hours or whatnot, yeah. Uh, this is the uh, group by by action name, which is basically the pie chart that you just saw, yeah. And um, sample search journey uh, based on the query ID, uh, 
for both the queries index and the events index. And the session uh, um, based on the client ID. So uh, these queries are already available for you in the uh, documentation, but uh, no, not this one. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, this goes to say how easy it is to get started with uh, UBI. Yeah. So now going back uh, to the presentation, um, the art of the possibilities. Um, I mean, uh, you you all, some of you are probably using some of uh, some kind of uh, secondary re-rankers, uh, learning to rank, or uh, you're also probably using uh, learning to boost or meta rank or Amazon personalize. Uh, for most of the things that are in here, the common denominator is a uh, judgment list. Yeah. So I attempted to create uh, with SQL uh, um, a basic uh, judgment list. Uh, if you look at it, it is basically uh, joining the queries index and the events index with uh, using the query ID as the joining factor. And I'm grading it based on, let's say, if action name, if all the three actions such as uh, item was clicked, uh, uh, added to cart and purchased, uh, I'm, I'm saying it, this particular doc ID is super relevant. If uh, only two of the items or two of the actions are performed, it is slightly less relevant, but still relevant. If only one is performed, I'm grading it to one. If none of them is performed, I'm grading it to zero. And with this pretty straightforward SQL, I'm able to create a judgment list. Yeah. So uh, this is the, uh, I mean, this SQL probably is not going to work in open search. Uh, I, I attempted it. Uh, but this is just to show you the idea. Um, you could also consider using, let's say, um, uh, using the Hadoop uh, client, uh, open source Hadoop client. Uh, to, let's say, create data frames for your UBI queries and your UBI index uh, queries and the events index and write join queries uh, in there. Yeah, so that's also a possibility. Insights uh, uh, dashboards, we already saw uh, how you can use uh, uh, the uh, dashboards to get uh, gather insights. Um, you can also write SQL query, but the SQL query lacks the visualization in open search. So what we also have uh, uh, is uh, a query syntax called PPL. Uh, uh, folks familiar with uh, Splunk probably can easily understand what PPL is. Um, uh, but the, the difference is that with PPL, you can actually create visualizations uh, uh, for the equal and SQL query, but still create visualizations, yeah. Um, uh, so one thing that I want to also point out is um, I, 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 at some point I was telling you about how the events index probably there's a very good chance that it is going to grow, uh, grow good enough or big enough to actually be bigger than your actual inventory index or maybe even multiple folds. So at some point you have to think about cost uh, uh, to save all this data, to store all this data. Let's say if you're storing it for an year or two, so in open search, we have what we call uh, a warm node, which is basically uh, storing uh, older data, archiving older data in a, a cheaper, um, cheaper uh, instance type, um, storage dense instance type. So you can write policies to move your older data to uh, uh, cheaper uh, devices. So hence, uh, that way you can cut cost. Uh, another uh, thing that you can think about is writing, um, using rollups uh, in open search to roll up your uh, older indices. Uh, so you create a summary index uh, of your older index. So you lose the granularity, but you still retain enough information uh, to do trend analysis, yeah. Um, so I know I'm saying rollups here, but I'm using transform here. I had some problems, but this is just to give you an idea and I managed to shrink uh, as you can see, the size uh, of how much uh, we are able to shrink, yeah. Um, insights, uh, so slicing and dicing the data with SQL is something that we already saw. Um, another thing that you can do is uh, use anomaly detection that is available with open search, uh, or maybe even uh, uh, outside uh, open search. So you can, so since these are time series data, you can use anomaly detection to find, let's say, um, uh, for zero results or trending searches, let's say there's a TikTok video going viral and everyone is trying to buy the same product, but you do not have it. 
this is something that you can capture uh, as it happens, and you can, let's say, scramble to do something about it. Yeah. Um, alerting, I mean, uh, bare minimum, you can also think about using alerting uh, to set some thresholds uh, and get alerts when uh, such a thing meets a certain uh, threshold. Yeah. Uh, A-B testing. Um, uh, I would wrap, and I think I missed one other thing. Um, so, I mean, we did see uh, the uh, how UBI provides tailor-made the uh, user behavior metrics that it provides. Uh, we also looked at the standardizing the schema, uh, the UBI search, uh, UBI for open search, and beyond. I think this is the one that I missed. Uh, maybe I have two or two or three more minutes. I want to quickly talk about it, and I want anyone who already know about UBI to challenge me because this was something that I thought, I, I realized uh, when I was looking into this, which is basically this, right? So oh, um, UBI at this point is only available with OpenSearch. But let's say, I mean, not everyone in here is probably using OpenSearch. You are using uh, uh, several search engines out there. You're probably using one of them. Um, I know UBI, the, uh, the plan is also to have uh, the interested parties, interested search engines to integrate uh, or implement UBI in it so you can start using it. But then, um, uh, as I was saying, right, the UBI events has no um, uh, dependency on the UBI plugin with OpenSearch, so which, which basically means if you're using any other search engine, you still can use the UBI plugin, uh, UBI with open search for your events index. So the only thing is the UBI uh, queries, right? Because the plugin takes care of logging it. I am thinking, but uh, let's say, I mean, you can continue to use your search engine as you do today. But let's say if you're using Soar in this case, right? I can still pass the entire Solar query in this query uh, syntax, right? and still would be able to lock the search query. The only missing thing here would be the doc IDs that were sent back uh, as a part of the search query, because of, of course, yeah, OpenSearch does not have your data. But what you can also do is, um, instead of using the UBI plugin to send this data to uh, OpenSearch, you can treat it also as an events. And once the search is uh, returned, uh, let's say when you're using Solar, the search is now returned, you also have the information on the doc IDs that were written, you can still put them back uh, to open search, yeah? With, this is what I mean by um, beyond. Uh, so which means you can use technically uh, uh, UBI already and do not have to wait for UBI to be implemented uh, in your search engine or whatever that may be, yeah? Uh, so yeah, so this is all I have. And before I say my thank you, uh, we are working on an RFC, uh, a feature. Uh, what we saw so far is the this portion of it is what we saw, uh, uh, which is basically collecting the data and then getting some insights uh, so you can take uh, uh, actions based on it or create judg judgment list based on it. But the, the next, uh, Taking it to the next step, what we are planning to do is um, creating automated uh, 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 implicit judgments. And also based on that, uh, sampling the queries from the already collected UBI queries, and then create uh, uh, such metrics, uh, 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 NDCG or uh, any other such metric. So all this can be automated. So um, Daniel here at some point, uh, Daniel from OLC at some point is going to talk about this hopefully. Uh, and he would give you a detailed uh, picture of this one. Uh, so what we are looking for is um, if you think this is valuable or if you think there can certain things that can be added. So we want to build the right thing, right? So yeah. Um, yeah, with this, I would say thank you very much. And I hope I am on time. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Ashwa. And, and just to add to that, I'd just like to extend my thanks from the OSC team, because one of the interesting things about working on this plugin with, with OpenSearch is their willingness to make this a truly open schema and open specification. It's all open source. And not to just say this is just an open search thing. This is a potential way for any search engine to log what users do with the results 
and for all of us as search engineers to build something together that makes our life easier, gives us the data we need to make search better. So I think that's a, a fantastic, very exciting opportunity. So we've got some questions from online, but I'm going to start in the room. Does anyone have a question for Aswa? Right, I think this is the, the first one here. Hi. Uh, you mentioned about uh, query ID, and uh, you briefly mentioned how you can reuse it or whatever. Uh, but I'm thinking from a context of type ahead search, does mm -hmm. your schema, are, are you designing your schema so that, you know, uh, we can capture insights and keep them uh, and have all the kind of, you know, we will have different kinds of metrics uh, that we want to calculate over a, a, a typing session, right? And uh, a type ahead search uh, will have its own, you know, uh, those kinds of things. So how do you think that the schema is already uh, capable of capturing all that or do you have plans already to extend mm -hmm. the schema? Okay. So the, the way I see it is um, um, when you use type ahead, when the user is using a type ahead and when they click on it, this is an event uh, for the events metric. So that's how you capture that uh, type ahead has been used. But on the search, um, on the queries index, you wouldn't have this information. You don't need this information because the query ID is going to be the same for the chosen uh, suggestion. And uh, that query ID would also be locked uh, for the record that says that the type ahead was used. So you should be able to get this information from these two indices. Yeah. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. OK. Great. Okay. Thank you. OK, we've got an online question here from uh, Tobias. Um, the detailed data from UBI would be very useful for teams who want to train ML models. What's the best way to get that data you'd be interested in uh, out of the open search database as a kind of data product? Ooh, yeah, I mean, um, for things like, let's say, MetaRank or AWS per uh, Amazon Personalized actually requires the click metrics. Um, I mean, that is true. I mean, you can, uh, of course, use, let's say, in open source, we have a scroll API, or we also have, a, a, we are recommending to use such after instead of scroll these days. But there are ways to export data from open search um, uh, in a large volume. Um, yeah, so there are means to export this data in large volume, maybe also in real time to put that data in any other service or uh, open source uh, software that you use to uh, train your models. Yeah, so that Fantastic. is completely possible. Yeah. Okay, and and maybe just you know the specifics there we can drop into the uh, into Slack or something. Yes. Um, okay, so do we have another question from the room? There was somebody over here. Yes. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question on the versioning. Uh, the OBI plugin, is it available for the latest 2.17 version for yeah, OpenSearch yeah, yeah. or is it for 2.15 as well? The question is for uh, uh, since when. The compatibility of so the plugin. I believe the first cut, the, the first uh, release was 2.14. Uh, what I showed was 2.15. So I, it's quite safe to say that anything after 2.15, you probably can start uh, using it. That's yeah. Right. So uh, every uh, version has the plugin version compatible, plugin version also released. So you have to use the appropriate uh, version. Yeah. OK. Um, I think we've got time for another quick question online. Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, Debra Brother asks, um, how do you take care of an explosion of events? Hmm. Now, many entries in the events yes. with the user's persistent clicking activities. Yes. Yeah, I mean, um, I, 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 I predominantly work on the log analytics uh, in OpenSearch, and the mapping explosion is the number one problem, or at least one of the biggest problems that uh, uh, I see. The way I see it is, uh, as any other mapping problem, you have to be conservative. You have to find a balance between being conservative and being flexible, in the sense you want to pick a field which you are, if you're unsure of a certain field, maybe it can go inside. But if you're sure that this is a field that you're not going to use or hardly going to use, then you have to really question if it has value. If if, if storing the data for a long time, which is also going to cost you, uh, if, if it adds value or not, yeah. 
So, yeah, I mean, it really comes down to using our judgments to see. Uh, and also, okay, maybe another better way to look at it is uh, to use a, uh, a mapping that is not dynamic. You define what you want. You must define what goes in your mapping and not let the dynamic mapping create whatever field that you are sending in because that is going to be quote unquote uh, dangerous. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Ashworth. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah.